Hi, and welcome to the Science Trek podcast about force and motion. Here to help are Evie and Garrett. We've collected some of your questions about force and motion. And Dr. Catherine Devine, professor of physics at the College of Idaho, and Dr. John Gardner, professor of mechanical and biomedical engineering at Boise State University, will answer them. Here Here we go. go. Hi, my name is Ryder, and I go to Owyhee Harbor Elementary School. And my question is, what is force and motion? So force and motion are uh, part of a, a family of, of, of concepts that, ha- that help us understand just the basics of, of the world around us, like distance and velocity and temperature. And force is the word we use to describe a pushing or pulling along a line of action, along a certain line. And motion is, 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 is the result, often the result of a force. It's, the, it's a, a body that can move or that moves because you've pushed on it or it continues to move because nothing else is pulling it back. One of the most important forces in the universe is gravity. That force pulls things down. But Dr. Devine, are there forces that pull things up? There are a lot of forces that pull things up rather than down. If you're in an airplane, um, then there's the lift force from the wings pushing you up, and that's why you go off the ground. If you pick your coffee mug up off a table and, and have a sip, then, um, then your arm is exerting a force, a pull on the mug that causes the mug to go up. And so forces can pull in any direction. It just depends on the type of force. The reason gravity pulls things down is because what we experience as gravity is because the planet Earth has a lot of mass, and that mass exerts a gravitational force on all of the objects on it. And the direction of that force is towards the center of Earth, which we consider down. Hi, my name is Connor, and I go to Kamea Elementary School in Kamea, Idaho. My question is, how much force would it take to move a 13-ton chain? So the answer to that one is it depends on how you want to move the object. And so if you have a 13-ton object, and you just want to move it a little bit, you don't want to speed it up, then it's not going to take as much force as if you wanted to make it, say, accelerate at the rate of a um, rocket ship or something. So if you have a lot of mass and you want to make it accelerate, the amount of force you use depends on the acceleration. That's Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. It depends on the mass, but it also depends on the acceleration, how much you want to speed or slow down that object. This is an opportunity to talk about friction as well. So a, a really big, massive object floating in space, no matter how little you push on it, it'll move because there's no other forces acting on it. If it's sitting on the surface of the Earth, you know, whether it's on the in your parking lot or, or on, 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 a, on a road, uh, there's a lot of friction between, as we talked about earlier, a lot of friction between that body and, and the surface. And so when, to get it to move, you have to overcome that friction force. And, and depending on what those surfaces look like and how big the object is, that friction force um, can be bigger or smaller. Now for a, but it is related to the weight of the object. So a 13-ton object is going to have a lot of friction that, that you have to overcome before you can get it to move. Hi, my name is Nicole, and I go to Owyhee Harbor Elementary School. And my question is, how do asteroids move through space? Asteroids are really interesting. Most of the asteroids in our solar system uh, exist in what we call the asteroid belt located between Mars and Jupiter. And we think that those asteroids are probably um, the start, the building blocks of planets from very early in our solar system that weren't able to group together through gravity because they were being disrupted by Jupiter, this really big planet nearby whose gravitational field was keeping those little possible building blocks of a planet from forming together under gravity. Um, that said, though, how, how do they move? Well, they orbit around the sun just like any other planet, and so they're orbiting around the sun. Their orbits tend to be maybe a little bit less circular than some of the planets, and so there are certain groups of asteroids that have elliptical orbits, um, which means more like an oval than a circle. And those are the ones that tend to be a little bit more interesting to us here on Earth, because if they're moving rather than in a perfect circle, but in an oval, that has a the potential then for their orbit intersecting ours. And so those are the ones that get close enough that we can sometimes see them crash into our atmosphere, um, like we did a couple years ago in Russia, where it caused that big explosion above a Russian town. And so. Um, gravity keeps asteroids in an orbit around the sun, um, and they have either circular orbits or orbital or oval orbits, and it's the oval ones that we like to keep an eye on. Hello, my name is Ruth, and I'm from Basin Elementary. 
The question I would like to ask you is, if there's no gravity in space, can meteors travel forever? Yes, meteors could travel forever. And this is getting back to the idea that an object in motion, like a meteor, will stay in motion forever and ever unless acted on by another force. And so if there were no gravity and no other forces, then that meteor would continue traveling forever. Um, if there was no gravity and it hit something, then that contact force would be enough to stop it. So if there were other forces to bring it to rest besides gravity, then maybe it would stop. But if no forces act on it, then yes, it would travel forever. And, and it, I think it'd be important to realize that even if there is gravity out there, and there is, an asteroid, as it nears another mass, another planet or a star, it could move its velocity, but it could keep traveling. Just because it's experiencing force doesn't mean it's going to slow down. Remember, the, the force can, can speed up or slow down, can, always, can also change direction. And so what, what more, more than likely happens with an asteroid out in space is as it gets near a star, it, it mo it's shifting a little bit, but if it's too far away, it won't get caught into an orbit. It'll just move into a different direction onto the next star and, and so on. So it could, it could go on forever even though it's being exerted. It's being acted on by forces. Hi, my name is Danica, and I come from Milwaukee Harbor Elementary School, and my question is, why did you decide to become a scientist? It's hard to remember the first time that I realized I wanted to be a scientist, but I think it, it was pretty early on in elementary school when I realized that I just was fascinated by the, the lessons I was learning in science, and I really liked that subject um, and wanted to keep doing it. It was kind of my favorite part of the day. And then by the time I got onto high school, I just I still really enjoyed those classes and really enjoyed the stuff I was learning there. Um, and so it just kind of built um, on, on and kept going and I kept enjoying it and it never stopped. So here I am, a scientist. And, and I'll answer that question by, by changing it a little bit. I'm not a scientist, I'm an engineer, but I am a researcher and scientists and engineers are very similar to each other. They have very similar backgrounds, but they have different, usually different goals, different reasons to, to go into the field. Um, I've always been interested in how things work and, and usually machines, I've taken things apart a lot, put them back together sometimes. And, um, and I'm interested in making new things. And so that's why I wanted to be an engineer. That's all the time we have for this podcast. Thanks for answering our questions, Dr. Catherine Devine and Dr. John Gardner. And thank you for listening to our podcast. If you want to learn more about science topics, be sure to subscribe to the Science Trick Podcast. And for more information about force and motion, check out the Science Trek website. You'll find it at sciencetrek.org. Bye! Funding for Science Trek is provided by the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, the Idaho National Laboratory, and supporters like you. Thank you.